Greetings, Durud. We welcome you to this latest edition of Farhang Connect, Farhang Foundation's virtual talk series. I am Ali Reza Ardekani, Executive Director of Farhang Foundation. We are a member-supported, non-political, non-religious, not-for-profit organization with the sole mission to celebrate and promote Iranian art and culture for the benefit of the community at large. Today, we are delighted to welcome artist Kurosh Beykpur for his special presentation, Mystical Origins of Persian Calligraphy. Kurosh Beykpur is an award-winning graphic artist and type designer. He received his BFA in 2003 from the Tehran University of Art and received his MFA in International Contemporary Art and Design from Lim Ko Wing University in 2011. Beykpur's use of typography and graphic design has been published in more than 20 countries around the globe. His impressive portfolio showcases his remarkable creative energy and signature designs with a special focus and interest in Persian and Arabic typography and identity design, portraying his love and appreciation for Iranian art and culture. He has designed for a wide range of clientele, including Google, the Broad Museum, the J. Paul Getty Museum, the Powerhouse Museum, UCLA, UC Irvine, Northeastern Illinois University, and Oklahoma State University, just to name a few. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Kurosh Bakepur. Kurosh John, welcome to Farhan Kanek. We're delighted to have you. Glad to be here. Thanks for the invitation and making all this possible. Okay, I'll uh, hand things over to you now and let you start your presentation. Thank you, of course. Well, in this session, uh, live talk, I will talk about mysticism and its impact on the Persian calligraphy based on Hurufiye and Noktaviye doctrine. I will try to shed light on the intellectual backgrounds that have shaped the collection I'm going to present and the exhibition I had at Atwood RC Gallery. In fact, the past exhibition was a combination of ideas that I now want to explore in a reverse direction. To begin with, uh, I will briefly explain how mysticism originated in religion, then discuss the intellectual way of thinking in Hurufism. And during the talk, I will fo focus on some example to clarify my own work. Another point to note is that uh, I will only briefly mention the Hurufism and Noctavia doctrine, and I won't separate them as Noctavia is the branch of Hurufism itself, albeit with a lot of differences. My intention is not to delve deep in these two school of thoughts, but rather to clarify their intellectual style and the profound impact they have had on the Persian calligraphy and my work. When a religion is formed, at the very beginning, it will be divided into two branches. A group of people will convert or attract it to the religion because of the fear of God represented by that religion, while others will be attracted through love, as you see in the picture. Uh, for both of them, the body is a small temple because God created man in his own image. However, in the first group on the left side, a man does not have an effective rule and merely follows the rule. Essentially, for this group, religion is the one-way connection from above to bottom and to keep the temple clean, both spiritually and physically. Examples of such a rule include prayer and abstaining from certain foods such as pork and alcohol in different religions. This group of people will be awarded or punished afterwards. But for those who have been attracted through love of God, however, it's different. Their punishment and happiness happening every moment, 
which is called tabzobast in mysticism. If they feel God's presence, they experience expansion and vastness, which is bast, and if not, contraction and sadness, which is gaps. This uh, connection with God is more like give and take relationship. This sort of bound it, uh, is what makes mysticism is so special. And it is the fundamental key that allows mystic the freedom of interpretation. This freedom of interpretation is the first step to building a new world. And each world created by those masters is so different from the rest. And it opens up a different reality. One like Buddha is calm and shiny as a diamond, while another like Rumi is roaring and bloody as Ruby. Uh, as he says, عشق از اول چرا خونی بود تا گریزت هر که بیرونی بود Why does love have to be so deadly in the first place to push away the outsider? Around uh, 700 years ago in Iran, there was a movement against the regime. People, they were tired of the famine, slaughter, and the consequences of the Mongols' attack. As an example, we have Sarbedaran, the head on Gallows movement. In the same period, which happening during the springtime of our mystic Fazl Astaravadi, which he later became the founder of Hurufiye and led one of those movements. I have to mention, these movements were struggling to rebuild Iranian identity. And for this matter, they are deeply connected to the Iranian culture. Fas himself was a poet, a mystic, Sufi, he knew Farsi, uh, archaic dialect of Astarabad, Arabic, and he was familiar with Quran, Torah, Gospel, and Ismailism. I should also mention that at the same time, Kabbalah was introduced to the Persian community, which is uh, Jewish mysticism. Basically, Fazl was a scholar who shaped his doctrine based on a specific structure, the combination of abjad system and Kabbalah of sort to create his own interpretation of religion, which at the end resulted in a new one. Technically, uh, both Kabbalah and Abjad system assign numeral value to each letter forms, therefore each word. In the sacred val and the sacred value of each uh, letter forms and their numeral value comes from Torah and Quran itself. For example, uh, God gave Moses instructions to create a sanctuary called Holy of Holies. Kodesh Ha Kodeshin, in the shape of perfect cube with dimension of 20 by 20 by 20 cubits. This makes the number 20 so significant. Similarly, in the Quran has 114 chapters, which is also a significant number in this system of beliefs, or based on Hurufiye, the 32 letter forms of Farsi alphabets, 28 of Arabics, or number four in Noctavia beliefs, which is relevant to the four elements. In his system of interpretation, Faz believed there is a hidden meaning and relationship between uh, words and their numeral value. If you are capable of connecting these do dots, you can reveal a secret and he is the one who has the ability to decode it. For example, in a way, the numeral value of Fazl is 10, and the numeral value of Messiah is also 10. Therefore, Fazl is Messiah. And this is how the system works. You can find the connection between two different words and reveal a secret behind that connection. In many cases, Fazl taught uh, as a linguistic. He believed that God is not perceptible. And a word is the only tool that helps to know the creator, whether by speaking or writing. 
And he also believed that the speaking is the most advanced form of communication. And of course, it consists of letters. Or based on the religious textbook, let me find it. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. According to Faz, human are books of God, and letter forms are the main reality of existence, or body part uh, matched with the letters, and God can be known through his attributes, and his name indicate, indicating those, and the letter forms are the most important of them. As you can see, it works like a circle, and at the end, it all comes back to the letter forms and their numeral value. Therefore, if you want to visualize the creator or over human and sonic comet, you have to draw letters. But the point is, if you build your doctrine based on letter forms, you cannot ignore the shape and static of the letters itself. Later, one of his followers, Mahmoud Pasikhani, the founder of uh, Nohtavie, expanded on this idea and influenced the static of the Persian script. He emphasized that his book should be written in Farsi script that he invented, and by that he meant Nastali. The picture that you see is, uh, as a source is relevant to the Bakhtashi order, which is heavily influenced by Hurufiye. In fact, after the massacre of the Hurufism follower in Iran, the remaining ones either migrated or fled from Iran and they went to Anatolia and modern day Turkey to promote their religion. In general, the continuation of Hurufiye can be seen in Bakhtashi order, and the continuation and influence on Nuhtaviyya can be seen and traced in Bab and Babiyya inside Iran. And uh, a brief, uh, okay, I have another picture here. As you see, this is the uh, picture of the notable work of uh, Mahmoud Pasikhani, Kitab Mizan, uh, from the only copy that we have inside Iran, and it's been written in Nasdaq script. And a brief explanation about uh, Chelle Neshini. Chelle, it's number 14 Persian uh, alphabet, uh, numeral, numerology. Uh, as a brief, uh, um, I will talk about Chelle Neshini and we'll which later became clear during the conversation, its impact on my work. Chelle is a 40 days meditation in solitude and austerity. And these uh, 40 days, in these 40 days, the seeker or mystic sits in a small area. He or she doesn't speak. Uh, it's a little uh, recite mantra and probably guru is present to help the seeker through the journey. Apart from the fact that sitting in a circle as a part of sacred geometry is considered a safe space and creates a place for concentration, the power of the words and rhythm resulting from the recitation of mantra is also very important. This collection that I'm going to present uh, is formed on the basis of the power of the world and their sacredness, as well as creating harmony and tranquility through repetition, which also exists in Iranian architecture. Uh, usually, uh, the project I worked on starts with the internal question and curiosity and ultimately take shape through reading, research, and exploration. I usually start by reading articles and books, finding pictures and resources, and while doing so, I write down the idea that come to my mind at that moment, sometimes uh, with a bit of sketching. Uh, they are mostly scribbles, 
that uh, sometimes I don't really understand what I was thinking about or what the purpose of writing some note was at that time. However, over time, understanding takes shape in my mind and those scribbles become the seeds of the creating a work. As you can see, even though uh, it's uh, clear what they are, at the same time, they are nothing but uh, capable of expansion and extension. I have to add uh, my relationship with Iranian mysticism and culture is heavily dependent on the principle of authenticity. I read sources related to the topic that captures my mind, but ultimately I turn to the original handwritten version to get closer to the essence of the subject and eliminate any intermediaries. That's why you see uh, manuscript and cut out from the original document. Okay, uh, for example, in these pages, I have been studying celestial patterns and constellation and sun. And at the end, they reveal themselves as a series of dots in the artwork that I will definitely talk about the reason of their appearance. And the photo from the opening night in Advocacy Gallery uh, that I exhibited this uh, collection. Uh, the middle picture probably belongs to Ali al-A'la, also known as Amir Sayyid Ali Isfahani, principal successor of Fazl himself, and, it is, and it's related to the Bakhtashi art. But the idea goes back to the, one of the very key beliefs of Hurufiye. As you can see, his name actually forms his eye, nose, and mustaches, and I have used this quality in all my works by using different work and, and different words and combination. Uh, as I mentioned before, the placement of the dots that you can see on the artworks is relevant to the constellation. And the letter forms next to each one represent some sort of secret. Uh, I had a concept in mind, so I broke it into the pieces and playing with it, with the letter forms, and in some cases, the numeral value as, for, as well, to follow that idea which I had in my mind while keeping it in secret by not revealing the exact word. In this uh, two, uh, I also added the circle as a representation of Chelleneshini, as well as illustrating sacred geometry to create a safe space and having a human in the center for deeper connection. And uh, the one you see on the right side is the recent example based on the same perspective. Uh, also, I had another idea in mind. Uh, I was trying to show the demonic and angelic side of the human in this series of work. That's why some of them is looked like demon. Another photo from the opening night. And sacred geometry. Sacred geometry is uh, another topic that always sees my attention. In sacred geometry, in addition to geometry order, the shape themselves are also, are, they are also significant. Uh, as I mentioned before, repetition creates a rhythm, which in turn creates calmness and tranquility. And of course, each culture and religion has a different elements to represent this quality, such as uh, color, material, and the way the motif comes together, like having symmetry or moving to the center in decoration of Iranian domes or having the imperfection point 
to per to break the perfection because only God can create perfect thing. And this works. Uh, I focus on playing with letter forms, their numeral value and their combination. However, another point uh, that uh, another point is that uh, repetition in Iranian mysticism and uh, architecture can also be considered from different perspective. One of these perspectives that is that repetition in architecture is a symbol of unity of existence. Uh, uh, with the repetition of form, I try to show diversity, as you see in the one in the middle, or this one, to show the diversity uh, while uh, also reminding a viewer of their unity and the common source of uh, grace without changing them. And another point is that this uh, fractal, these faces, uh, as a, a small part of the whole work, refers to the process of defining something in term of itself called recursion in mathematical concept. Recursion is used to solve problem by breaking them down into the small sub problems and solving them recursively. In mysticism, recursion can be seen as a way to explore the interconnectedness of all things and to uncover a deeper meaning behind reality. Uh, this uh, spiritual reality is often described as a higher or deeper level of existence that can only be accessed through mystical experience. This uh, fractal, these spaces can be seen as a way to explore this hidden reality by recursively zooming in on it, revealing more and more of its underlying structure. In some mystical tradition, this method is used as a tool for spiritual growth and understanding. For example, the practice of meditating on the name of God evolves repeating the name of God recursively in order to explore the deeper meaning and connection that lie behind it. And by repeating, I had the eye on this idea as well. Or inspired by, uh, this is the same concept. Or inspired by, particular work, I created new pieces and I placed human, like the others, at the main focus in the center. And by adding letters, geometric shape, uh, I was trying to include a, another layer of mystery to the artwork as well. Another layer was to use uh, uh, this is zoomorphic. Uh, zoomorphic based on the calligraphy tradition to represent some religious beliefs and demonstrate certain abilities that can be attributed to the animal. For example, in this image, the one on the right side, the dragon represents ego. As Rumi says, If there is a dragon on pass, Love is like an emerald. Remove the dragon with the shining of the emerald. Uh, at the same time, I also had an eye on the book of the wonder of creation and the secrets and mysteries it holds, drawing a mystical and real animal, but different from the reality. In fact, by drawing these animals, we have created them. This boundary between uncertainty, reality, and the imagination has always been very fascinating to me. Based on this idea, I try to uh, create the, the, the lion and the sun and several other animals. 
there's a four deer in here uh, on the right left side or this one is a lion as well and uh, this one is some sort of cat as i mentioned before uh, these dots on the artworks refer to constellation position in my opinion the same idea of the wonder of creation is also applies here. Assuming and creating something that doesn't exist in reality, and if it does, it's in a different way. There is a hidden gain in connecting those points to each other to draw and create a new form. The same as the hidden meaning behind word and the numeral value. It is the same boundary between being and non-being, some sort of twilight kind of feeling. And they are the sample of the, the Wonder of Creation books with those dots on it, which is the policeman of constellation. And if you believe the power of the world and their secretness, why not wearing them? like our ancestor used to, to protect ourselves from what's happening out there. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much for that presentation. Now we have some time to go over some questions from uh, the audience. Uh, so let's start. Um, in your work, I see some aspects of Jap Japanese influence, especially in your uh, sacred uh, geometry canvas works. Can you please explain how you're influenced by Japanese printmaking? Yeah, actually, give me a second to show you something. <laughs> I was thinking I'm the only one who did, found the connection between uh, Iranian and mysticism and Japanese sort of thing. But recently I found this book, The Sufism and Taoism. It, wow. it seems that this uh, culture that's... Uh, have been uh, like uh, traveling through the region from the Japan to Iran to China and India. And uh, to be honest, we cannot separate them from each other. It's some sort of interconnection between them uh, as well as uh, I'm fascinating, but, uh, but uh, with Taoism and uh, like the Japanese spirituality. So if you see some effect of, uh, on that in my work, it's not intentional, it's just happening. Uh, while I was working. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> um, the next question is, uh, do you design digital fonts that users may be able to purchase or download for use on computers? Well, yeah, of course. Uh, of course. I have uh, several books on uh, several fonts on uh, Google font directory, which has, which they are uh, like a uh, free to use. You can just download it. And I have uh, several on Adobe fonts that needs to be purchased from kind of the type of foundry. And there are a few around as well. Okay, great. I'm sure a lot of people are interested in those. Um, when designing a font, what is the process of conveying the message as well as the social and political circumstances of the font you're creating? Uh, to, to, to be honest, it... I follow the same rule that uh, I do when I create the artworks. There's a curiosity or there is a need for something. Sometimes it's like a internal that I have a feeling for something. And sometimes it's in uh, referring to some things that happening outside in world. So I'll try to make something relevant to the time that I'm living. It's, it could be personal or, or it could be intentional to the sum uh, action. That's fascinating. Um, the, uh, I love your design of lion and sun. Can you explain the significance of this symbol in your work or in general in Iranian culture and if it has any uh, connections to astrology or astronomy? The, the, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, to be honest, I was looking for for a symbol uh, relevant to the wonder of creation that I was talking about. I was looking for a symbol to create some animal which has a 
deep connection to the Iranian culture. And to be honest, I couldn't find anything most powerful and relevant than a lion of the sign. And of, we know that it's a really old symbol. It backs to the like a thousand years ago. Uh, and I, if I'm not mistaken, we have a coin of Anahita, which is standing on a lion with a shadow of the sun. It backs to the 700 years ago. And during the Safavi, the Qajar, it became a symbol for Persian Iranian com community. So uh, that was the only thing I was thinking about when I work on that. And recently I'm making a, like a dragon kind of sort of animal based on Shahnam as well. So I'm looking for the animal which has a deep connection to our culture. Yes, and I think it's really interesting to learn the, the origins of the lion and the sun because there's so much... Uh, um, misinformation out there as to what it symbolizes so exactly uh, yeah um one thing i wanted to ask you myself is how did you get interested in calligraphy and fonts and text in general uh well uh, did, uh, as you probably know i was born in kermash as a kurdish uh, kurdish boy so i was all, always uh, affected not affected i was close to the spirituality when i went to the art university uh, it was the booming of the graphic like a design because of the new era era in tehran so and the graphic was all around the places and reza abedini the famous iranian graphic designer he he had he had he, he made a bridge between traditional uh, Iranian uh, calligraphy and the modern day graphic design. And it was really fascinating to me. I went to him and I was practicing. I was looking at the new examples and uh, little by little, it's passed for like 25 years that uh, I became mesmerized by the beauty of uh, Iranian calligraphy and art. That's great. I noticed uh, in your artwork that you presented in the presentation that was at your exhibition, you have a very specific palette of colors that you use. Is there a reason for that? Or is that a personal preference or anything behind that? Yeah, there is intentional. For the palette that I'm using uh, regarding the graphic design kind of artwork, uh, I usually try to make the palette based on Iranian color that I see in architecture, carpet and things. Hardly ever I use like a sharp, sharp color uh, as we don't have it in Iranian art. It's always mixed with something. Uh, for this collection that I represented, it was really intentional. I use gold uh, as a symbol of blood, which represents the human side, and the gold uh, as a symbol of the greater creator or the God uh, at the same time to show the demonic and angelic side that we have and the, the black color as well, uh, which is relevant to the Iranian mysticism. Uh, this is a question I think uh, maybe many people are thinking is where can we see and learn more of your artwork reference in this presentation? I mean, you have your own website, but I, with which we will share with uh, everyone on, on the screen, but if there's anywhere else they can go to get resources on you. But your artwork is uh, was featured at Advocacy, correct? And um, yeah, yeah, exactly. They represent yeah, they, you. Exactly. The, the gallery represent me, and uh, it's my honor to work with the Advocacy Gallery. They have all the pieces, and uh, it's going to be another exhibition for sure. We'll make sure to include that link in our talk as well, so it will be on the below screen so everybody can see it. Um, well, I want to thank you again for uh, joining us today. This was a fascinating talk, and I'm sure it will be only the start of uh, more questions. And if uh, folks have any uh, additional questions, they can submit them to us uh, via email at info at farhang.org. And we will sh be sure to share them with Kurosh, and he can answer uh, everyone directly. As always, please visit farhang.org for all our latest upcoming events talks, and programs. We thank all of you for joining us from across the globe today for today's talk, and we look forward to welcoming you next time. Uh, Kurosh John, thank you so much for being with us. 
and we appreciate. Thanks to you, thank thanks to Advocacy to the Farang Foundation for making all this possible. I'm really grateful. Thank you. It is our pleasure. Until then, we bid everyone farewell, and we look forward to welcoming you again next time. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.